Yep, that's right. We're talking about these again. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to a new video here on my YouTube channel and yes, as I said, we are discussing iPhones again today and more specifically iPhone cinematography, how you can shoot incredible footage on your iPhone camera. Now if you've not seen my first video in this series where I give you the basics on iPhone cinematography, go and check it out, it is incredibly vital because without that then you won't understand some of the tips today. And if you find any of these tips that I'm going to give you today useful, which I know you will do, be sure to slap a huge like on the video. And if you are new around here, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. And when I say consider, I mean consider just scrolling your mouse down right now and clicking the button. It takes two seconds and it doesn't cost you anything, so go ahead and do it. But let's just jump straight into the video. And before we do, though, just mine the cable. Just ignore it. Pretend it's not there. It's just basically so I can record some audio. If I didn't have this plugged in, you wouldn't be able to hear me. But let's just jump straight to it. Anyway, so let's actually get into the cinematography tips. And all of these tips actually fall under the same category. And it's just basically treat your phone like it's a DSLR camera. What do I mean by that? Well, let's just start with tip number one. So tip number one is move your phone like a camera. Just because it's a phone doesn't mean you start waving it around like this. You wouldn't get a DSLR and start waving it around like that, would you, when you are recording a video? So just because you're using a phone doesn't mean you do that either. I mean, people get these little things where you can put a little thing on the back and you can actually hold it still. I don't really tend to need that. You just literally wrap it around your fingers like that. And if my cable wasn't in the way, it would look much better. But treat it like it's a DSLR. Use very, very slow movements. Use push, pull, you know, pan left to right, stuff like that. Use the movements as if you are using a DSLR. And if you do that, then you will get 10 times better footage rather than just going, oh, it's an iPhone, let's just go like that, point it at something, move it around quite fast, have a lot of shaky footage. Because at the end of the day, if you get some decent footage with some decent movement, very, very steady, then you can put it into Premiere Pro or whatever use of editing software you use. And you can apply Warp Stabilizer to it. It gives that extra stability. And then it just looks like you've got some very, very high quality footage from a pretty much DSLR, a pretty decent DSLR camera. Because as I said in the first video, which is why it's important you go and check that one out, you can get the same results if you use an app within your iPhone that produces results similar to a DSLR. So as long as you move it like a DSLR, no one will know the difference. Now tip number two is something that you wouldn't do on a DSLR. So this is where the only real difference comes in and it's don't zoom in. Now the reason for that is the zoom on the iPhone regardless if you're using a, you know, a third party app or whatever or whether you are using the just normal camera app which I advise you not to do but in case you are doing that don't zoom in because the quality difference drops it, it just drops horrendous. It's such a significant drop if you just zoom in slightly and if you zoom in all the way then the footage is literally unusable. I'll be showing you some kind of sample footage right now but if you are zooming in just don't use the things that nature gave you called legs. If you need to get closer to something to get a you know, shot of it, walk towards it. Or another big tip, which some people just forget completely like, oh, I've not got a drone. I can't get a different perspective of something, which will be a video I'm going to be doing in the future very, very shortly. Use a different perspective. There aren't just two perspectives in life. You know, there's not this one from chest height and then drones from above. Get low down, use a corner to, you know, edge in your shots, move around the corner so it's a revealing shot. Use people in the way of the object that you want to see. A really, really cool one is a crossing, you know, zebra crossing. Loads of people cross and then once they've moved, the shot that you want to have will be revealed behind it. Use different perspectives or as I said, just use your legs. They're there for a reason, just walk towards them. Now tip number three is lighting is a huge thing when it comes to iPhones. iPhones struggle with lighting, so use natural lighting where possible. And I'll give you a little tip if you're not going to. So like now, I'm actually filming this on a camera. I'm not filming on my phone, as you can see my phone's here. But if you are indoors, thankfully I've got a light that's pretty decent at what I want it to do. But if you need to use a lamp, I don't know if my lamp's, it's over there somewhere, my lamp, or a ceiling light, they give off this yellow glow, which is never a nice look in videos. It needs to neither be white 
or a natural lighting. So if you need to have that yellow light on, use a auto white balance mode, well not an auto white balance, a white balance mode called, I believe it's called trans cadence. I may be completely wrong on that, but I believe that's what it's called. I'll be showing you on screen right now anyway. Use that and it basically neutralizes that yellow light and it makes it look white. And that's just a really, really cool method. But as I said, for iPhones, lighting is key. So try to film outdoors where you can't or use natural lighting. Move towards a window or just make sure that you are outside. Obviously, if it's nighttime, you don't need to worry about that. And talking of nighttime filming, go and check out my video on golden hour filming where I do briefly touch on nighttime filming as well. There will be a link on screen right now and down below in the description. But let's move on to point number four. Okay, so tip number four can be applied to all types of cinematography, but because... We are talking about iPhones. Some people just think all you need is the iPhone. But audio is always king when it comes to filmmaking or video making. And the reason why is our brains, I learned this, our brains actually process audio before they process light or, you know, images. So audio is much more significant than video. If you have insane visuals on a film or on a vlog or on any type of video, but your audio is absolutely horrendous because our brains are processing the audio more often or earlier, people are going to click off. They're not going to give you the time of day. If you don't capture their attention within inside the first 15 seconds, then they're clicking right off and audio is one of the key things. So make sure that you get some kind of audio recording device because iPhone audio isn't great. I'm using the Rode Smart Lab Plus. I've done a review to this on my channel. Go and check it out. Again, link on screen and down below in the description right now. This is great for shots like this where you are just sat down making videos like this. And if you're recording audio that's going to be in the environment, so if you are recording a vlog or a film, check out some kind of external recorder or a handy recorder, I believe. Some of them are called the Zoom H1, Zoom H4 kind of thing. And there'll be some like links to things like that or shots of them right now. And they are really, really good at recording external or environmental sound effects. So you'll need something like that just to improve your audio quality purely because that is something that most people favor over the actual visuals themselves. And tip number five is something to do with post-production. Again, just because you're filming on your iPhone does not mean once you have filmed, you then pick your iPhone up, you just clip little bits of the you know video out, you just do little jump cuts, you edit it in some awful, you know, software on your phone edit the video properly get some free software if you need to or get a free trial of something or you know look for dodgy downloads on the internet which is not what i've done i've actually got an adobe creative cloud membership so don't come after me but um i use premiere pro that's what i edit my videos on record your videos professionally with cinematic tips edit your videos professionally with professional editing software it just gives you a lot more chance to put a creative spin on the footage you've taken yourself. And obviously, post-production, editing, color grading, stuff like that obviously takes your footage to the next level. So edit your videos properly if you want to get that final 10 to 15%. To be fair, actually, I'd say it's a lot more. I think video editing is actually a huge chunk of the production value compared to actually recording the footage itself. So I'd actually probably rank that a bit higher. I'm not entirely sure why I've left it to the last tip. But yeah, video editing is is key. That is all for my top five tips on iPhone filmmaking, iPhone cinematic footage. Now, as I said at the start of the video, and I've probably said it quite a few times during the video, if you've not seen my first video, go and check it out. It's basically the basics. So I basically tell you to record at 24 FPS, which obviously you won't know how to do unless you go and check out that video. And some of the settings that you can manipulate where you can basically get an app, which you can actually manipulate all the settings to have them exactly how you want. So go and check that out. And it's just basically cinematography basics for an iPhone. So go and check that video out. If you found this video useful, which I know you did because you're still watching right now, if you haven't already, slap a like on the video, comment any questions or just general comments you have down below and I'll be sure to get back to them straight away. And if you're new around here, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. It does help me out significantly and I appreciate it very much. But thank you all for watching. Until next time, goodbye.